Today, I'm gonna be sharing my top 10 movie set in New York City. I'll also be revealing some cool filming locations, so watch till the end. New York City is such an iconic location for film that this video was long overdue. Now remember, this is a very subjective list to my tastes. Tell me down below in the comments your favorite New York City movies. I'm curious. And a special shout out to Tom Evans, a member of my Patreon, for giving me the idea to make this video. We're gonna start with a film that I'm betting many of you have never heard of, The Warriors. And this 1979 cult classic is about a gang from Coney Island, Brooklyn, traveling to the Bronx for a big meeting and then getting framed for the murder of a rival gang leader. And the story and the movie is all about their adventures getting back home to Coney Island and just fighting their way through New York City. They run into a lot of other colorful gangs including my favorite these guys who are dressed up as baseball players with face paint baseball bats uh, the whole setup Now, I admit this film probably didn't help New York City's reputation for crime in the 1970s and 1980s, but it had an epic soundtrack, excellent action sequences, and it was filmed all over New York City, Manhattan, Brooklyn, Queens, and then it leads to the climax of the movie, which was shot on location in Coney Island, on the beach, and while I'm not gonna give it away for you guys, but we actually covered uh, some really cool things to do in Coney Island on a video that I shot last summer, so definitely check that out. And if you love action movies, and of course the New York City setting, then The Warriors is a perfect movie to watch. The Day After Tomorrow made in 2004, and if you couldn't tell by now, I am very much into action and suspense films. And I'm gonna let you in on a little secret. Not a single shot of this movie was actually filmed in New York City. It was actually filmed in Montreal and Toronto, but I didn't even realize that until I did research for this video one day ago and because they depict so many iconic locations in New York City, I just had to include it on this list. The plot of this movie is how climate change occurs so quickly on Earth that a new ice age happens in a matter of days. And there is just this amazing sequence of how it all passes through New York City. I'll show you here. Talk about attention to detail. They had those New York City cabs up in Canada for that scene. And Jake Gyllenhaal does a tremendous job. I think as the lead in this movie, and I actually saw Jake Gyllenhaal one time walking on Houston Street by himself. In fact, he does live uh, in Tribeca. As far as filming locations are concerned, no books were actually harmed when they burned books in the New York Public Library. I honestly thought they filmed inside of it until I discovered that the movie was taped in Canada, but yeah, it's got a lot of action. I think the acting is very good. Put this one on your New York City list. A Bronx Tale is such a great movie. Now, it was even a Broadway musical at one point, and it tells the story of a boy as he becomes a teen and gets involved with the local mobsters who just happen to hang out down the street from him. Now, before we get more into the plot, it's important to note that while it's titled A Bronx Tale, it was actually filmed almost entirely in Astoria, Queens, and in our Astoria, Queens neighborhood guide, my friend Greg and I showed the filming location of the apartment there, as well as the famous bar. Then we have the bar where Shane Bippy, that was the bar right there, and now you just can't leave this video yet. Now you just can't leave. I will never forget the look on their faces. 
The movie has plenty of action sequences, but it's more than just that. It's a great story. Chaz Palminteri, who wrote this originally as a one-person play in the 1980s, does an epic job acting as one of the leads. It's a great movie. Highly recommend it. If you want to feel a bit of that old-school New York charm, and it's got an amazing soundtrack as well. I don't know what it is about this movie, but so many tourists want to visit the filming locations on Home Alone 2. Maybe it's because it's from the perspective of a child in New York City at the first time, and for many people, when they visit New York for the first time, looking up at those big buildings makes them feel like a kid again. Without giving away too much of the plot, Kevin McAllister in part two of the Home Alone series takes the wrong plane, his family goes to Florida, and he ends up in New York City by himself and really makes the most of it. And he visits so many iconic locations that you could base a lot of a New York City trip on what he did. For example, they filmed at Battery Park, Central Park, Rockefeller Center, and I don't think the acting is particularly amazing, although I do think Joe Pesci did a great job as one of the villains. But if you want to get your kids pumped up to visit New York City, I think put Home Alone 2 on and they're definitely going to be very excited. Heck, I was even watching some clips earlier today and it got me pretty pumped up. The 1976 Martin Scorsese classic, Taxi Driver. Of course, I had to include this on the list. A young Robert De Niro. What else do you need for a good movie? And the plot is centered around a young taxi driver who gradually becomes more mentally unhinged as the movie continues. All the animals come out at night. I like it because not only is the acting on point, but it depicts a gritty, grimy New York City that really doesn't exist as much today. There's a scene in this movie shot at a diner, and we actually showed you where it was in my Highline video. It's called Hector's, and honestly, the interior of Hector's has not changed a whole lot in 45 years. If you want to visit one of the more famous filming locations from this movie, but Taxi Driver just has a little bit of everything. I think De Niro does a fantastic job. Put this on your New York City list for sure. Kids, this 1995 movie is a bit controversial, I will warn you. It covers some topics like drug use and sex at a young age. And the plot of the movie is following teens around New York City a day in their life and all the trouble that they get into. But it's very real and it feels very authentic. And there's actually a famous scene that was shot in Washington Square Park, which is one of my favorite places in the entire city to hang out. A lot of movies tend to be so cookie cutter and kids to me felt a lot more raw. And it was also Rosario Dawson's first movie, if that counts for anything. In fact, for a lot of the actors, it was their first movie. And again, I will warn you that this movie is not for everybody. It has some sensitive topics. True story, the lead actor, Leo Fitzpatrick, was actually cast by the director when he spotted him skateboarding in Washington Square Park and cursing. And for many of the actors, it was their first movie. And a lot of people thought that it was actually a documentary. And Leo Fitzpatrick said that he was getting nasty phone calls from people who thought that he was actually the character that he was playing. That being said, if you want to see a movie that's raw, that's authentic, that feels real, check out Kids. The theme song to Ghostbusters is probably as famous as the actual movie, which was released in 1984 and is, in my opinion, one of the best comedies of the 1980s. And no surprise, it was set in New York City, although a lot of the interior shots were filmed in Los Angeles. I'm sure many of you have seen it, but if you haven't, it 
follows some paranormal scientist whose job is to capture ghosts. And I actually really loved the cartoon version of this movie a lot when I was a kid, but I digress. The important thing for those watching right now is that many of the exterior filming locations are easily accessible around Manhattan. In fact, during our Upper West Side Guide video, we showed you where Spook Central was located right next to Central Park. Also, you can head to Tribeca to see the exterior of where the Ghostbusters headquarters were, which is actually an in-use firehouse right now, and they have some Ghostbusters art if you go visit. This is a very popular tourist destination. I saw it, I saw it, I saw it! It's right here, Ray. It's looking at me. This movie has such a great cast of characters, including one of my all-time favorites, Bill Murray, who does a fantastic job in the film. And with the current state of affairs in the world, I'm beginning to feel like I'm in Groundhog's Day, the movie, another great Bill Murray film. Escape from New York. John Carpenter directed this cult classic back in 1981, and while he is far better known as a director of Halloween, this is one of my favorite movies of all time. And the plot is really clever. Essentially, the crime rate has gone up so much in the United States that they turn Manhattan Island into a prison. Once you go into Manhattan Island, you don't come out. And this relates to current events a bit, as a couple of months ago, President Trump at one point said they were considering quarantining and closing off New York City, and it made me think of Escape from New York, so of course I, I went and watched it again. Kurt Russell does an outstanding job as Snake Plissken, and in the movie, he has to sneak into Manhattan to save the president from the prison as his plane crashes into there. It's got plenty of action sequences and a great soundtrack. Now the bad news is, if you want to find many of the filming locations from Escape from New York, you're not going to find them in New York City, as most of the scenes were filmed in East St. Louis because there was a lot of burned out parts of the city at that point in history. It was a lot easier for them to find abandoned cityscapes to film in. That being said, Liberty Island was actually used as a filming location. In fact, this was the first movie ever that was allowed to use Liberty Island at night. So the next time you visit the Statue of Liberty, think this is the spot where Snake Plissken started his escape from New York. So this is the Spider-Man from 2002, starring Tobey Maguire, and uh, I've actually been told that I look a little bit like Tobey Maguire. In fact, my favorite troll comment ever was that I looked like a young Tobey Maguire if he never made it and was still a struggling actor. Oh, well, I'll take it. In case you're not familiar with the plot from the movie or the comic book, Peter Parker gets bitten by a genetically engineered spider and gets all these superpowers and basically just battles villains over the course of many different movies. For its time in 2002, I thought the special effects were really, really impressive. A lot of the scenes were filmed on studio sets like the Times Square sequence, but you can find many filming locations around New York City, like this epic clip shot at the Roosevelt Island Tram. Look, I'm not a big fan of superhero movies like Adriana is, but there's something about Spider-Man that always draws me in. I don't know, maybe it's seeing him slinging around all the skyscrapers. The New York City setting really does it for me. So I highly recommend Spider-Man if you're a fan of comics and action movies. All right, I'm saving one of my favorite all-time movies for last. Goodfellas, and this is the second Martin Scorsese film on this list, and it's actually based on a true story. It follows Henry Hill's rise and fall in the mafia from 1955 to 1980. It has everything. A great story, great acting, and an amazing vintage soundtrack. As far back as I can remember, I always wanted to be a gangster. 
Now, what I really love about this movie is it's not really filmed in Manhattan, no. It's filmed in Queens, in Brooklyn, even in Westchester and the surrounding area, which gives it more of a real, authentic vibe. Now, there are a few filming locations you can visit from Goodfellas if you're a fan. One of them is called Jackson Hole today, but it was airline diner in the movie, and I even want to visit this place really badly. Another spot you can visit is Nears Tavern in Wood Haven, Queens, and some of the biggest scenes in the movie happened inside of here. It's actually one of the oldest bars in New York City. My friends Greg and Jumi from Food and Footprints actually did a great video about this tavern if you want to check it out and learn more about its history. But this movie is an absolute classic. Anytime I have the option of watching Goodfellas, I'm gonna sit there, I'm gonna watch it from start to finish. It has everything. It is definitely, in my opinion, Martin Scorsese's best film and my favorite New York City movie. Now it's your turn. Tell me your favorite New York City movies in the comments below. I'm curious. Check out our other New York City playlist, link down below in the description. Guys, thank you so much for watching as always. Until next time.